What's going on, folks? Thought I'd show you around the garden a little bit because everything is looking so pretty right now. And I've been bummed because I've been really wanting to go live and show everybody what's going on. And my live has not been cooperating. It's been like blurry and pixelated and I don't know why. So we'll just do a little IGTV tour instead. But it's a really beautiful night. Evening, I should say, not quite night. And everything's coming to life out here. Flowers and fresh trees included. So I decided to walk around and kind of point out what we got going on. So this is a Black Mission fig tree. We're in the front yard, by the way. There's my car. So front yard garden, if you're not familiar with our property. So there's a Black Mission fig. And here we have some verbena and some lavender. And before we head that way, we'll check out this little area here too. So these are our pollinator islands, we call them. We have everything from yarrow and hummingbird sage and various succulents and culinary herbs like sage and oregano and thyme. That's a variegated thyme down there. I think that's actually our lemon thyme. That's why it has yellow. Um, aloe vera, some zinnias popping up. There's pin cushions or scabiosa, more culinary sage. There's a little oregano patch, lavender, obviously. Speaking of lavender, this lavender's quite the show off right now. It's so pretty. And then over this way, in the pathways of our beds, we're getting a bunch of volunteers. So we have volunteer calendula and borage and marigolds popping up all over the place. Because they were grown in these beds last summer and then went to seed. There's our garlic. More calendula. And these are African daisies. They close up at night um, and then open during the day. So they all look closed kind of right now. Some of them need to be deadheaded too, but they open up a lot during the day. And then this is a barrel of turmeric that hasn't sprouted yet. And this cute little thing, I love this tree. This is a dwarf weeping mulberry. And it is deciduous, so it looked really sad all winter, but it's just getting back. Look at all the little babies. So we're definitely gonna have to net this. My idea is to put a big metal arch over this area so we can drape bird netting um, because the birds will eat the crap out of the mulberries. We have a new little artichoke here. This is a strawberry guava. And then for anyone new um, to our yard, this all used to be the driveway. Um, so just last September, the current fence line, I'm standing like I was on the fence line before and it came up here. So we actually had the concrete removed and tore out a bunch of ice plant here and terrace this corner to put in this whole space. So we have a new blooming budding Fuyu persimmon tree right here that also is deciduous so it's just getting its little growth back and it's just precious to see and there's cosmos and nasturtiums tucked back there and the nasturtiums are all volunteers Look around the bird bath too and up here we have all kinds of kind of similar stuff yarrows and sages and salvias this is a trailing rosemary and we'll head up there in a second. Let's check out this little fig tree. This is um, a lemongrass that kind of died back. It's coming back. And this cute little fig tree is coming back too. And it's a brown turkey. And then we have a row of sunflowers. Up here, yarrow. And this is the, or is a good blooming one? This one this is the hummingbird sage. It's like my favorite. More verbena back there. This is a really precious salvia too. I love the color of this like peachy one. So pretty. And this is a um, avocado that we have right there. Kind of hard to see in the glare. 
anise hyssop or um, agastache. It's a pretty big plant, it's hard to tell, but that's with our lemon guava back there. And then in the back back, we've got more verbena and more yarrow, a lot of the similar kind of stuff there. <laughs> He's here. What are you smelling? White sage. Does it smell good? Yep. Mmm. You just put white sage in my face. So yeah, a little row of sunflowers here. And then up here, I'll turn around in a second, but little potatoes are popping out. Good amount of potatoes. So I did a post about growing potatoes in containers. Where's the Hummer? Oh, hi baby. Are you visiting? Hi Hummer. What are you doing? Hi, sweet bird. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. And so the hummingbird is on the watermelon salvia. This is their favorite. Is that your favorite, baby? Here you go, birdie. He's over there on the other part of it down there. Yeah, watermelon salvia. They like to zip around in our yard a lot. Okay, and then potatoes. So the watermelon salvia are edible for us too. So they're great to suck on, almost like honeysuckle. Really sweet, good in salads. I don't blame the hummers for liking them. A couple more potatoes. Oh, I forgot to show you really quick. I'll have to be quick. The, um, well, this is super cute. And this volunteer, very pink nasturtium. This thing smells, this is our pink jasmine. It smells like heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. So most of the vines up in this area are, um, oh, did you pick a passion flower? Yeah, he just picked me a passion flower. So most of the vines up here are passion flower or passiflora edulis, purple passion fruit. Um, and then we have some jasmine worked in here too. Yeah, we have red. There, there's one. So there's red, non-edible passion fruit too, like that. Okay. And this is a passion fruit vine as well, but I think we might take it out um, because we want room for another avocado. So here's another avocado tree. This is our Haas Avo. It's the biggest. We just put this in last October, Aaron. Last October, but it's just like taken off. Um, so. I think we want another avocado though, so we might take out that passion fruit because we have tons of passion fruit. And then coming down the little path here, this is a path, <laughs> it's supposed to be a path, but I have to get through the fava bean forest. So if I can get out here without crushing all the plants. Okay. Yeah, I think we've got lots of beans too. So there's all the fava beans. And more figs. So this is a honey delight fig. And then back behind the figs, there are more volunteer nasturtiums. And there is borage too. There's the borage. And then a bunch of milkweed. It's coming back. This is kind of like a milkweed patch back here. And this is our loquat tree. That's one of our newer fruit trees. And then this is pineapple guava. We have a couple of these in the side yard and in the um, front kind of driveway area too. We've got carrots going. This is our newest little raised bed with some tomatoes. A little basil and pepper too. Onions, collard greens, green beans, komatsuna mustard greens. Some companion flowers, calendula there. These are cool red mustard greens. In with the collards. All kinds of peppers, baby onions, a couple squash, a couple companion flowers here. And big old lavender that just got a haircut. We couldn't even walk right here. Rosemary, nasturtiums. 
and I got cut off. So part two of the impromptu front yard tour. So over here, we've got some really pretty, pretty, more love and wishes salvia. Some succulents back there that tipped over in their own bowl. <laughs> Need to fix those. And the bees have been loving this flowering rosemary. Nasturtiums, these are all volunteer nasturtiums. Some of them are pretty big too. Look like at that. And these are all edible flowers and leaves, kind of peppery like arugula. More figs. And that barrel is turmeric as well. This is our California pepper tree that we planted just about mm, three years ago? Two years ago? What was that, Aaron? Yeah, it must be three years now. But it's grown a ton. Drought tolerant and awesome privacy from the neighbors over there. And the Hummers like to sit in it. I can hear, oh, there he is. Hi, Hummer. Hi, baby. Hi, silly birdie. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Can I focus on your little butt? Hi, baby. Oh, you're so cute. So they like to sit in these little, on the little branches in there. What a good bird. And that's our monarch enclosure over there. I'm gonna do a post very soon about raising monarchs. And this is all oregano. And we have a little lavender coming back that we gave a pretty hard haircut. Bird baths, essential for, that one needs to be filled Essential for a wildlife habitat. Have a couple bird baths. And this is a blueberry. Mystic blue spire sage. Another favorite of the bees. Pretty these are. So this is purple culinary sage. It's delicious, but the flowers are so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> and then walking up the middle, we've got little aloes hidden everywhere. Set the world on fire. And again, those volunteers. And that's about that for the front yard. Oh, I don't know the variety of this cactus. And yes, that one over there is San Pedro. Um, and here we've got peppers and basil. So if things look a little tight, that's because um, this is basil. This is a cinnamon basil. So we'll keep this nice and trimmed up to give the pepper and the eggplant ample space. So if I ever smush things a little bit, it's usually the companions and the herbs I can cut back, but I try to give the peppers and definitely the squash. That's just a whole squash corner there for that guy to grow in. So if you enjoyed the little impromptu tour, this is a hummingbird's other favorite spot. This is a California sycamore. We planted that at the same time as our magnolia over there first trees that we put in and thankfully this is on the far north side of the yard so the whole garden the south and the sun whoops more behind me 
um, so it won't shade much except in the very very late summer the sun sets way that way and it'll get behind it but I'm tripping over beds but it's pretty um tall and just floofy at the top right now as it gets way older it'll be a problem probably but for now yeah by then we'll be too old to care and maybe not in this house any longer and those are the solar lights wrapped around it but such a pretty bark because this too you know started as a little whip for us you know probably i don't know that big around so it's really rewarding to watch them grow